Huh, Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Resident Evil. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek, and today we are here to give our non-spoiler review of Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. And uh, I'm not even going to waste any time. I'm just going to say to everyone out there who had very passionate, negative feelings towards this movie, even though I disagree with some of your criticisms about like who they cast and things like that, a lot of you on top of that said, well, we still don't think the characters are done right and that this movie looks bad and you know it looks cheap and in the wrong ways. And I was definitely one of the more positive voices here on YouTube. I know some of you out there have agreed with me on the positivity and have been trying to be optimistic and give this movie a chance. And then there are those of you who completely disagree with me. This is where I will full on have my foot in my mouth and say, even though I disagree with some of the specific criticisms this movie got, that some of the you know uh, people out there who weren't a fan of what they saw in the trailers and stuff and the casting and stuff, I still don't agree with you on the casting. I, th I still think these actors could have done a good job if they had a good writer and director. And Johannes Roberts was kind of selling me on him, even though I hadn't seen a lot of his previous work or any of his previous work, really, except the the, the Down Below movie or whatever, the, one of them. I didn't see both of them. Um, but that's all I really knew about him. And when I saw him in interviews he was just saying all the right things you know he's clearly media trained because he would say oh you know we're doing this for the fans we're putting in these things i i played the second game the remake uh, you know right as i was about to turn in the script for the, the movie and i decided to add some of those elements in uh from the remake and he was speaking the language and uh, and he probably is a fan much like paul w S. anderson when he said he's like oh, i played the games you know i'm a fan maybe we need to stop hiring fans to make these movies i'm thinking um, I'll be right up front with you. I do not like this movie. Uh, I was blown away by how bored I was and how much I didn't like this movie. Uh, they do try to add some interesting elements, uh, kind of, but I don't think fans out there are going to like it. Uh, you know, if people had an issue with Avon playing Leon in this, this movie isn't going to change your mind on him. Not because I think he does a bad job. I actually think he's good in the movie. He's just not playing Leon. We talked about that before where I don't care how characters look as long as they act like the characters. He is not Leon in this movie. <laughs> like not even a little bit like Leon. Clearly they are going for a different interpretation of the character, which I'm also fine with. But my issue with that, Johannes Roberts uh, and people who made this movie, the producers and everyone, um, and who gave this guy the chance to make this movie... When you have, oh, we have the Spencer Mansion in this movie, and we have the RPD, and look, they look exactly like the games, and we have this, you know, going on, we have this monster in the movie, and we're going to tell this story, and we're going to have the stars in it, and, our, you know, we're going to have Leon in it, and Claire, and we're going to have all these things from the game that you love, then give us those things. Uh, this was soulless. Uh, and I hate saying that, because it sounds like Johannes Roberts actually is a fan. Some of the cast sound like they were very pumped. Like Robbie Amell said he was very pumped to play Chris Redfield. Chad Rook said he was very excited to play Richard Aiken. And they were good in their roles to an extent, but their characters are hollow. They don't have characters. They aren't characters. Uh, they, they don't do anything. Like they're, Every guy in this movie is stoic man. And every woman in this movie is gun-toting powerhouse woman. And the only one who doesn't act like a 2D cardboard cutout um, with an attitude and a bug up their ass is Leon. <laughs> like, literally, Yvonne is the only one in this movie, uh, maybe next to Donald Logue, who plays uh, Chief Irons. They're the only two that feel like they have any personality, that actually try to go for something and do something with their character and be a little over the top at times, a little ener too energetic at times. But that gave them something. Everyone else in this is so flat and boring. And none of the emotional stuff that they try to force in here is earned at all. I mean, I knew we were in trouble. And we'll, we'll do a spoiler review and I'll do more details. Um, we'll talk about spoilers. But honestly, if you've played the first game or the second game, I can't really spoil anything for you. They changed some things like with Wesker and a couple other characters that are, they might, you might go, oh, okay. But yeah, that's it. That's all they do. Like that's, it's, 
I hate to be negative because like I said, I feel like I was one of the few positive voices on YouTube with my small channel here, you know, talking about this movie for the, ever since they announced it, we got the title for it. Um, we covered this movie behind the scenes footage. Like I followed this movie, like I follow the Venom movies on my Venom vlog on my main channel. And those, I still felt like in the end, I'm like, ah, all right, they're not great movies, but they still ranked around a seven for me and seven and a half because Tom Hardy's great in them. He brings something to the character. There's at least a little bit of fun. It's memorable at times, whether you like it or not. There's something that sticks out in your mind about it um, or a scene that really sticks to you. This doesn't have any of that. There's nothing that stuck to me. I mean, it's going to be really hard. I have to record these tonight because I think even without my short-term memory loss, I'll still wake up tomorrow and, and just not remember it because it's that forgettable at times. Um, most of the movies that forgettable. I mean, like th that's what I mean. And I hate saying all of this because like I said, I, I, but I gotta be honest, right? Like I, I feel like I gotta be honest. I can't just sit there and be like, well, I'm going to cross my arms and say it's good because I wanted it to be good. And I was optimistic about it. And uh, you know, no, if you criticized me and, and, and chewed me out and we got in arguments about this and you were saying that you thought it was going to be a bad movie, I kind of agree with you now that I've seen it. Like, I, And that's what I think. I mean, I still believe in you can make up your mind when you see a trailer. I think when you see casting, I don't think that's smart to... You can have an opinion, but I don't think making up definitively your mind about something um, is good until you see it in motion. So that's why I always said after the trailer came out, if people still didn't like the performances then fine, I, I get it, because at least you saw it in motion at that point. Because, I mean, Heath Ledger looked kind of terrible when he was Joker. And I know this is not a one-to-one -one comparison, but sometimes images get out there and you're like, eh, not very good. It doesn't look good. But then you see it in motion, and you're like, okay, now I kind of understand it. I kind of understand the vibe of the movie. This movie, I'd, I said this in my commentary, I think, for Res Evil, the final chapter. Um, but for those of you who don't make it through that full two-hour commentary track, I don't blame you, you know, but... I, I ripped into that movie because Paul Anderson, when he makes these Resident Evil movies, the, the, the six he made before, or he wrote six movies and directed four of them, um, but he would always say like, oh, I tried to, I, I borrowed scenes from the Omega Man and from, uh, from you know, uh, different John Carpenter movies, Escape from New York and stuff like that. And I kept thinking like, like, I understand doing an homage here or there that's like subtle to those movies because you're a filmmaker and you want to reference the people that made movies that inspired you to make movies. So I get that. So when Johannes Roberts said, I wanted to make Precinct 13 with zombies because I'm a John Carpenter fan and I want to do an ensemble cast like Precinct 13, I'm like, okay, well, I can get behind that a little bit. I, I hope it's not an identical ripoff of that, um, which it isn't. This movie is not a ripoff of uh, Assault on Precinct 13 by any means, but it also is not a flattering... Um, homage to it uh to to say it's in, that, that movie inspired this is not flattering i feel uh i like assault precinct 13 i like both versions actually um i like those movies but i mean those those have memorable characters and memorable scenes this has characters from the games so i remember them because i'm a fan of the games but no one really acts like anything like you have chris who's a guy I guess has abandonment issues, but they don't really address that throughout the story. Um, he just, the plot needs him to get in a slight argument with Claire after she tells him that, you know, she was in a hit and run and he's just like, whatever, I'm going to the police precinct. You know, the, the foghorn went off. Like I gotta go. And you're just like, what? He doesn't bring her with him and question her. Like I, I don't, there's just so many decisions that characters make that I understand these are different characters to an extent than they are from the video game. Um, and that the Johannes Roberts is adding stuff to them that weren't there, like the orphan stuff. I don't have a problem with adapting or adding stuff to characters, but man, this movie does it in all the worst ways. In fact, when I was watching this, I, cause I know some people said when they watch trailers, oh, this movie looks cheap. I'm like, well, it had a $40 million budget and $40 million doesn't get you what it used to get you in movies. Um, you know, so I can understand that, but this actually looked like it was made for less than 40 million. Normally I say a good sign of a director is when you can see every penny on screen. And I think that's why Paul W. Sanderson kept getting rehired each movie was because if he got a $60 million budget, you saw it on screen. They either did a big over the top action sequence or, you know, they had a bunch of monsters in it or a bunch of extras of zombies. They put every penny on screen. This movie does, but I feel like in some of the wrong areas. Now, some of the sets look great. 
I think Chad Rook posted some behind the scenes shots of like him sitting on the stairs of the mansion in the Spencer mansion. And you just see the stairs and like wooden stuff around it. And then they CGI'd the rest. And then when you see the movie, you're like, wow, that's amazing. Like they did a really good job of subtly filling in the rest of the police department. Well, except for like a couple shots look kind of bad. But the Spencer Mansion and minus the main room and maybe one or two other rooms, they filmed at a location we talked about before um, up in, uh, I think, in Canada somewhere um, where it's clearly not the Spencer Mansion. <laughs> like the, the rooms and stuff just don't match, but it's fine because they got some of the key rooms and that's all that, you know, was for fans. It's like, yeah, that's enough. They they put effort in and that's great. Um, but there's a rich history to that mansion. You don't get it in this movie. They Someone says it comedically in like a one line. And that's what they do. You find characters and they give you two lines of exposition to sum up that character. And then the rest of the movie proceeds to do nothing with that information. This movie is um, a prime example of why video game movies aren't taken seriously. Um, our video game adaptations, I should say, are, aren't taken seriously. Why they're so hard to make sometimes because you find these people that you say they're fans and they and they love these things, but Johannes Roberts, he's probably a fanboy, and a fanboy to me is someone who likes things but they don't understand the context. Like this feels like like when I was like nineteen and twenty, I would write scripts for like Street Fighter movies, um, you know, Capcom stuff, Darkstalkers, like an animated series. I came up with an idea for um, Resident Evil. I wrote a screenplay for Resident Evil, and it is like just fanboy fan fiction stuff that. I clearly don't understand characters or arcs or anything. And again, Resident Evil doesn't need to be this Oscar winning thing, but it deserves more than the Mila Jovovich movies we got. And it definitely deserves more than what this movie tries to give us. Like this movie at least has the elements. It has the characters we know, um, and they kind of look like the characters. They kind of at times act like the characters. But I mean, like if you look at Resident Evil 1, the video game, there's not a lot of personality to Chris or Jill because you, the player, are imprinting your personality on them. So when they're walking down a hallway and it's quiet and you're waiting for a zombie or you hear moans down the hallway, your thoughts become Jill and Chris's thoughts. And so we all have different interpretations of those characters, but what's clear is that the game doesn't give you a solid idea of their personalities. So that's why I'm okay with adding stuff to them in these movies to give them a personality, but this movie doesn't even do that. Uh, and that's the worst part about this movie is that it just it doesn't deliver on characters. It doesn't deliver on, um, you know, anything more than horrible fan service. Like, look, we isn't this nice? We put the Spencer Mansion here. We put the RPD in here. OK, but and but here's like a sample of a dog and here's a sample of a crow and here's a sample, a, a couple samples of zombies. And here's kind of a sample of a different monster, you know, um, that you saw in the trailer that had bad CGI. So I guess not a spoiler with the G monster. Um, it's like samples of everything. Here's a sample of a liquor. Like this, this felt like a fanboy wrote something and then someone was dumb enough to give this fanboy money to make the movie. That's how I feel about this, honestly. Like I, it sounds mean, I know, but I'm, I'm being honest. Like I was very optimistic going in and even the trailers, I'm like, if it's if they deliver a good B movie, I will like this, but they didn't even do that. Now, some of the camera angles, at least they didn't do like rapid cuts like some of the Resident Evil movies do where they're like seizure inducing. They don't do anything like that. And there's a couple of neat ideas where like Chris is in the dark in a room fighting zombies and just the gun going off lights up the room at times. All of those are like neat concepts and neat ideas. So I'm not saying this movie has nothing good about it, but the ideas are neat but the executions of most of those ideas are not. Um, so, but that room, that scene was pretty neat. It reminded me of that movie Equilibrium. Um, so again, I feel like a lot of times these directors, they come in and they go, I want to homage this, I want to homage that. But they don't know what that word means. They just copy something, just straight up copy it. Um, and there's scenes in this that are straight up copies from the game that make no sense to put in the movie, in the narrative they're trying to tell. And I went with a friend of mine who knows nothing about Resident Evil, and uh, and so he's like watching this and he goes, OK, why is this happening? Like after the movie, we were talking and he's like, why, 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 why? And he's a filmmaker and he's like picking this movie apart. This doesn't make sense. This And, I, and I'm agreeing and I'm like, man, I really wanted to like this. 
And he's asking me, like, you know, why does this character do that? Why? Is, and I go, well, in the game, the character has this kind of inf inside information. So that's why they do this. But in the movie, they don't really tell you that or give you that information. So the character's doing something they do in the game, but there's no reason for them to do it in the movie. And there's a lot of that happening in this movie. So for me, I didn't, I just didn't like this movie. I honestly, I, I, I was, I'm blown away, honestly, by how little I like this movie, how bored I was. Uh, I yawned a couple times. That's how bored I was. And even in a theater, I checked my phone. I checked the time because I heard the movie was like an hour and 45 minutes. And I was like, let's just, how much time do I have left? Um, I did it like halfway through the movie, check the time. Like, so for, for me, I just, I can't, I, I don't know if I, normally if I don't like something, I still recommend that people go see it and make up their own mind. And I obviously still do that. Like, you know, but I don't know if I could actually recommend seeing this in a theater. Um, ballsy choice for them to release this in a theater only and not put this on Netflix. To me, I'm sure they're going to make their money. It's a $40 million budget and they probably spent about 20 or 30 to market it maybe. So they really, if they hit a hundred million dollars, they're, they're in the good, you know, they're profiting somewhat, you know, $150 million, they're profiting somewhat. So they don't have a high goal to hit. So maybe they'll hit it with worldwide releases and stuff. But to me, I think I would have just, Netflix has a deal with Capcom and stuff to release Resident Evil content on Netflix. I almost, if I was Sony, would have just sold this to Netflix um, as like a one-off. That way everyone could just be watching it for free this weekend at home and it would get a lot of, you know, attention that way. But uh, I'm, I'd be interested, I'm interested to see what this does box office wise because uh, I don't know if word of mouth, it's got bad Rotten Tomato score, but I don't normally go off that. I normally go off other YouTubers and Resident Evil fans and what they think and a lot of them, it seems like, have been negative just based on their thumbnails. I haven't watched any. I didn't want to be, you know, spoiled. But you really can't spoil much of this movie. So we'll talk about more detail and spoilers in the next episode. But just my initial thoughts and just kind of my rant about this movie and just the broad strokes of what I didn't like about it. I mean, it's it's not good. And I would say if I was going to rate this movie, maybe a three out of ten, maybe. Um, or I guess if I'm doing things on the stars, uh, you know, because we have like our own measuring tool here um, with my Lego characters, because I made all the stars members of Lego, uh, I'll do 1.5, like one and a half stars uh, out of five. Wow, that's that hurts to say, because that almost sounds like they did nothing right in this movie. And there are a couple of genuinely neat things as a fan that I kind of appreciated. But what I l ended up being more intrigued in this movie was the stuff that wasn't lifted from the games like the stuff they kind of made up i was like ah that's that's something to interest me because the stuff that's just pulled from the games is pulled without knowing the it feels like it just pulled out of context it's like oh this scene happened in the game so it's going to happen here but there was context to that scene in the game believe it or not so what's the context to it here you changed all these elements in the story so it doesn't matter and you have these you try to force in these emotions with Chris and Birkin, like, you know, and like there's, they try to tell these stories that we'll get into in the spoilers, uh, but they try to force these relationships and it it's bad. It's like, it's not earned. None of it's earned. And then you get to the end and you're just like, you, they, it's like they try to add emotional stakes to these, uh, to this, this fight of this, this for the soul of this small town. And it's, it's pathetic. Like the fight for the town is pathetic. The, uh, the emotional heartstrings of it is not felt and it's not very well executed. And so for that reason, it gets one and a half out of five stars. Uh, but if you agree or disagree, whatever it is, let me know down below. And if you just want to be in the comments and say, hey, man, I told you so, <laughs> that's fine, too. I mean, I, I guess I deserve that. I still don't like to base things fully off of images and casting. I like to see things in motion. I thought some of the trailers were pretty decent. And I but I got swept up and, and kind of brainwashed a little bit by the interviews because I sounded like this was in the hands of a capable fan, someone who was a good filmmaker, hopefully, and someone who knew the material. But no, it's in the hands of someone who doesn't know the material and who is not a good filmmaker, in my opinion. So yeah, uh, I'm. This is, it's bad, uh, in my opinion. It's a bad movie. So you know, take that with you will. Um, still go make up your own mind. If, if you're a fan, obviously we're kind of tethered. We got to go see it, but... I almost, this is one of those cases where I hope it doesn't do well on some level. And I normally don't wish that on a movie. I honestly, if you go look at my other channel, I actively try not to ever wish 
a movie to not profit because I know people worked hard on this movie. I know very well because we followed the making of this movie from the makeup team, the wardrobe team, like the, the set designers, the actors, like everyone worked really hard on this movie. And that shouldn't go without recognition notice, of course, but it also shouldn't color my perception of how I felt when I walked out of this movie. And I felt like empty. Like I was like, this was, it was boring and it felt like a waste of time. Um, so I'm sorry to the people, if, if my opinion offends you, if you worked on this movie, like, I'm sorry, but that's just how I felt. And I, and I gotta be honest here because that's like, you know, like life's too short not to be. So, um, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there and we'll get our spoiler talk up right after this one. I'll try to put it up in the next couple days for you. So thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.